Masai Mara National Reserve, southwest Kenya. Shaped by volcanic activity millions of years ago, it is home to many magnificent animal species. All these wonders of nature wouldn't be here if it weren't for the lifeline of the Masai Mara, the river Mara. It springs high up in the Mao Escarpment and mounts 400 kilometers later in Lake Victoria, the largest tropical lake in the world. Unfortunately, increased land use and agricultural activity are polluting the Mara. Due to irrigation and rainfall, pollutants from fertilizers find their way into the river. We call this agricultural runoff. Downstream, the water of Lake Victoria changes into a green thick soup dominated by blue-green algae. High concentrations of these algae are toxic to both man and animals. Normally, unicellular organisms called diatoms are dominant in lakes as well as in our oceans. Diatoms are a key source of food and energy for other organisms and they turn sunlight into chemical energy through photosynthesis. In this way, diatoms produce a quarter of Earth's oxygen globally. Human activity and the resulting eutrophication are putting a strain on diatom growth and thus on the entire ecosystem. To research this, a team of the University of Antwerp went to Kenya. Their colleagues of Yale and the Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies already set up camp deep in the savannah. Learning from the local people, the scientists have since long built up a thorough knowledge of this ecosystem. In their research, they will be focusing on a particular chemical element, silica. Ever cut yourself on a grass sheet? Big chance silica was involved. The surface of leaves can sometimes feel like sandpaper. This is caused by phytolids, structures in grass that contain silica, making them less attractive to grazers. Silica is important because on the one hand, the supply of natural silica to rivers and lakes balances unfavorable human nitrogen and phosphorus inputs caused by agricultural runoff. On the other hand, the supply of fresh natural silica is vital for the growth of diatoms. A unique feature of diatom anatomy is that they are surrounded by a shield made of silica. When diatoms die, these shields sink to the bottom of the lake. A lot of silica is thereby lost. The formation of new diatoms thus depends on how much fresh silica is supplied to the lake from land through rivers. But how does it find its way into the water? The team will collect soil and water samples along the riverbank, as well as grass and soil samples higher up the riverbank. Analyzing these samples will help in understanding what processes are going on. To collect the samples, the team gets the help of local park rangers. The Mara River has one of the largest remaining hippo populations in the world. About 4,000 hippos are resident. They prefer to lumber around their favorite spot and are keen to protect it. To collect the samples, the scientists often must find a path through the soggy mud. Carcasses and skulls of wildebeest that didn't survive the Great Migration a few months ago are serving as stepping stones. Once back in base camp, samples are processed the first time in an improvised field laboratory. Water samples are filtered and soil samples are packed vacuum. This should keep all samples fresh for transportation to Belgium. Here, specialized labs will analyze the nature and concentration of the silica in all the samples. The final results exceed scientific expectations. The team discovers that hippos are almost predominantly responsible for strong increases of silica transported along the Mara River. At night, the hippos come out of the water to graze in the savannah plains, often even a few miles away from the river. Giants like hippos don't mind the sandpaper-like structures in plant and grass. Each hippo consumes up to 25 kilograms of fresh grass each night. Once digested, the hippos will already be back in the water, hanging around their favorite spot. In order to mark their territory, hippos will twist their tails while literally spreading their dung around. The phytolids in the grass they ate are not digested. 
but ones in contact with water, they easily dissolve. Their feeding pattern and specific behaviour thus have a large impact on the functioning of this aquatic ecosystem. In a strange way, their seemingly dirty behaviour has a big impact on the supply of fresh silica to the river. Balancing out human input of nitrogen and phosphorus and supplying fresh silica to Lake Victoria, enabling the formation of precious new diatoms. Conserving these wonderful animals may very well be of crucial importance for keeping healthy the aquatic ecosystems and all the people that live from it.